everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiara, aka Bookworm Babe. And today, as I've been continuing to do like Read Caribbean inspired videos, what I really wanted to talk about today was uh, trauma in Indo Caribbean literature. So, as I've been building my collection over the last like few months, and I've been reading a lot more Caribbean novels, and trauma in these novels have been very, very common. And I've been noticing the pattern throughout the different books that I've read, and even some of the books that aren't necessarily centered on trauma or, you know, trauma-related stories still at least tend to contain, a, you know, like a paragraph at the least, or even just a section where a character is um, looking back in their life in their childhood or teenage years and they're remembering some sort of trauma that I, that they had faced. So aside from that trauma, what is also really prominent is the fact that all of the victims that are facing mental and physical trauma in these novels are women. And in the odd case, um, it's just children and there's no like gender specification. Very much the most common victims are women, wives and daughters in particular. And I just kind of wanted to talk about this because I feel like it's kind of been weighing on me a little and it's something that I've really been thinking about throughout the month and even prior to this but now given the fact that like one of the first books that I read this month was literally a trauma-based not um well not novel a trauma-based uh, book of short stories and they were all um, stories that are based on real trauma that women have faced so it really kind of weighed on me and it felt very heavy and I found myself just feeling overwhelmed by the, f the fact of this because I can't say that I was blind to the fact that, you know, women in Indo-Caribbean communities face a lot of traumatic events but having it all in front of me in books and just it's right in front of your face at that point, you can't really shy away from it and the thing is some of the books are not like they're not made up stories they are literally based on the author's real family members so some of those books would be like for example secrets we kept by uh crystal satal which is an amazing 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 book and it is essentially like a memoir um of her grandmother and her mother the stories basically highlight the different trauma and abuse that they face at the hands of her grandfather and some of it is extremely brutal and violent. These authors have done such an amazing job painting the picture for us like of the feelings, the environment, and they don't shy away from being very honest about the abuse that is faced. Like in for example Secrets We Kept, um, Crystal Satel is just straight up telling you that like even while her grandmother was pregnant with I think she had like eight or nine kids and some of them um, were born stillborn at that but she was pregnant obviously quite a lot and her grandfather like didn't take it easy just because his wife was pregnant like if anything she got beaten to the same extent that she did even when she wasn't pregnant. So this is what I mean when I'm saying that the books are based on real life stories like these are real women these are real stories all of these things happened. The abuse that we're reading about happened. So there's no shying away from it or acting like it didn't exist. And because the characters aren't made up and we're just exploring these topics through made up characters, it's again like it's harder to kind of push it out of your head because it's not like well this is a story we're shedding light on like domestic abuse or we're shedding light on different types of abuse that may have occurred in like households and how it was handled like this is real life stories on how these things were handled and it hurts it really like it genuinely hurts a lot to read these things and to i mean as a young woman myself to like internally feel this pain and at the same time you feel kind of i guess guilty because i have been fortunate to not have to face events like that in my own life from reading this i feel so hurt that this has been a reality for so many women in our community and these are just some of the women whose stories have been told through the forms of, you know, literature. And I'm sure there might be other streams that people have taken to tell their family or their own stories as well. But books are definitely a fairly common one. 
but what really gets me is there's so many women who this has happened to. So many women who maybe haven't even made it to this point to be alive to share their stories. Or maybe just never had the opportunity or the like strength to release that. and Or even have someone to release it to. Someone to tell, someone to talk about these things to. There's so many of these stories that have not been told. Have not been shared and passed on. I really find myself thinking about that. Like I really think about all the women whose stories weren't told and I feel like as we continue to move forward in our community and choose to tell stories, it is very very important that we give those voices to the people who haven't traditionally had an opportunity to have, have their voice heard and women of course are one of them. I'm. I'm happy that these books and these novels exist, but at the same time, they really do feel overwhelming at times. And I think another really big thing that I find myself feeling and thinking is, so aside from the women's perspective, there's also like the perspective of like the males who have committed these acts. And just in general, I'd say like Indo-Caribbean men as a whole, because Indo-Caribbean men get a very bad reputation as it is and I don't know if anyone else might be able to relate to this but I feel like at least once growing up you've probably heard somebody in your family say like you know Kuli men are no good, West Indian men are no good etc etc and I feel like they truly do get this reputation for being abusive and alcoholics and those are the two biggest trends in all the novels right everyone who was abusive you can almost guarantee that you know, one of the lines in the sentences that are woven in there will involve like them coming home from a rum shop or them smelling of rum or something like that. So it just really implies all of those things are always um, joined together and always like they always happen together. And these are such and these are very big stereotypes because they still follow us today although some of these stories have taken place 50 60 years ago which is quite a few decades ago but even to right now in 2020 there's still a stereotype in the indo-caribbean community and just in the caribbean community as a whole of that alcoholism and abuse and this is where i feel like it gets counterintuitive because while these are stereotypes and they do not represent every single one of our men, every single, you know, Indo-Caribbean man, these things really did happen with those combinations, right? Like people really did get drunk on a consistent basis and in those drunken states commit a lot of acts of violence. It's hard to find a balance when you're thinking like, okay, these are stereotypes of our men, but at the same time there are real life stories that are illustrating them acting in that way but we have to keep in mind that while these things have happened and while they are true we can't put these images completely on every single West Indian man and just be like you know they're all drunks they're all abusive because obviously we all have men in our family and we know good you know West Indian men good fathers good grandfathers good uncles everything right and the thing is even though they're stereotypes they really did happen so that is what is hurtful as well and I feel like that paints a certain picture for our community because if you're not Indo-Caribbean or Caribbean and you were to pick up a book that is centered around Indo-Caribbean characters and you read a story about, you know, these Indo-Caribbean women getting abused by, you know, their brothers, fathers, um, husbands and whatnot and then you maybe said, okay, that was intense, I'm gonna try like another Caribbean, Indo-Caribbean author, another Indo-Caribbean story, and you see it again repeatedly, you might really end up with this image that that is what our culture is like and that is what our people are like if you're not, you know, aware or if you're not familiar with these things. Those are just some of the things that I have really been debating over the last little while as I've been making my way through books, as I've been really trying to kind of break them down and look at them in different ways because I feel like one of the most important 
things and one of the biggest reasons why I like to show off Indo-Caribbean literature and authors and whatnot is because for especially for those of us who maybe weren't born in the Caribbean books like this can give us insight you know you, we get an idea of what our parents homeland was like 10 years 20 years 30 years ago depending on the time period the book is set in so there's a lot of insight and for me for example i was born in canada i've never been back to trinidad or guyana so I can't, I don't have any personal experience there. So for example, when I pick up a book and it takes place in Trinidad and they're going through all the descriptions of like the smells and the trees and the different types of, you know, animals and different types of food that's on a street and whatnot, that is painting this picture for me and it's giving me this image in my head and I'm forming this image in my head of what this place is like and what it looks like aside from obviously stories that I've gotten from like my family and my parents and whatnot but books push that a little further because there's different, you know, your parents might be from one place, but the book might take, you know, place in a next city so you're getting more um, you're getting more information, you're getting more pictures of different places, you know? So I feel like it's so important to, you know, continue to share Indo-Caribbean books and to continue to read them and which is why I do my best to really showcase them on this channel as well because for those exact reasons and so many more because that's just one perspective of like, for example, me or, you know, those of us who were born in North America and we can get insights into our culture. But even for people who were um, born back home, I'm sure it might feel comforting at times to just read about, you know, your own people, your own, you know, culture, and just feel like that familiarity in books. Like, you know, if the book is talking about the smell of doubles on the road, you're probably like, oh my god, yes, you know? So, that's, there's so much beauty in it, but there's also a lot of dark things in it, and hence why I feel like it's important that we talk about the negative things as well that we experience when we're reading our own literature. We have to be able to process these things and open up the conversation, open up spaces for people to share and healing and all of that. And for example, like right here, all I'm really aiming to do is kind of share with you guys like my thoughts and my feelings and have this conversation of like, there's a lot of trauma in our literature. Aside from the fact that the trauma can be overwhelming, there's also so many positive points to us talking about these things. Because if we don't share these stories, there's no awareness raised. Things like abuse and rape um, and assaults on women have been hush-hush topics in our culture for pretty much ever, like literally forever, you know? Women are always expected to continue their day, take care of the kids, cook the meals, continue to keep the household, you know, keep the household calm, keep the household like the status quo and not disrupt that, be docile, be silent and act like these things don't exist. And then as a culture, Indo-Caribbean culture has often just swept everything under the rug and then said, you know, we don't talk about these things. Between man and wife is behind closed doors, is their business, we don't talk about it, we don't meddle in it but we need to talk about it and we need to meddle in it. And I applaud people who have, you know, been brave and courageous to tell their family's stories and to tell their own stories because this is the only way that it's gonna happen. It's the only way that we're gonna start conversations and, you know, start to put our toes on those little sensitive points that we really should no longer be sensitive about. There's sensitive topics for sure, but there's no way that we're gonna be able to do better going forward if we don't talk about them. You know, we can't, we don't get all the answers from books. I feel like what I still find myself wondering is where the anger comes from. These stories are told from the perspectives of the people who are facing the abuse, right? And we never really get like an insight into somebody who was abusive or is abusive. And I don't know if we ever will, I'm sure we will one of these days, but I think that that's a really vital missing piece of the puzzle in literature and then in our outside conversations because I, I still find myself not understanding it. I don't genuinely understand what would get someone so angry that they want to put their hands on 
their, you know, daughters or their wives or even just women they don't even know, you know, assault women they don't even know. I don't understand where that comes from. I don't understand where that energy, where that mindset, any of those things come from. And I mean, I've yet to find an answer in my books, but I think that it's an important piece of the puzzle that we should definitely work towards uncovering as well, especially as these conversations are coming out more and more. But that's all I wanted to say for today. That's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I hope that you guys are able to maybe relate to this video or see where I'm coming from. And I hope I'm not the only one who maybe feels this way. I don't think I am, but you know, I would love to hear everyone else's like thoughts and let me know like, have you noticed these trends of trauma? How do you feel after you read like a book that is so heavily trauma based or mentions it? How do you feel as a female? For those of you guys who are, you know, women, how do you feel as a young woman or just like, a woman of whatever age group um, reading these things like how do you feel digesting it after because like I said I have trouble doing that sometimes and it really does weigh on me and I feel I tend to feel like upset for a while sometimes too after I read I would really like to hear um, other people's thoughts as well so please do comment and let me know otherwise that's it for today from me next week I'm going to be doing my wrap-up so I'll be reviewing all of the Caribbean books that I read for this month um, they're gonna be a mix of Indo-Caribbean authors as well as Afro-Caribbean authors so it's just gonna be a big Caribbean shebang of books and there's some really good ones too so I hope you guys join me next week to hear about those and I will talk to you later bye